Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I wanted to show you how to calibrate the polar alignment reticle that's inside the polar housing. Now we have a separate video on how to polar align, a tutorial on uh, the, the basic alignment procedures, um, and that'll get you very accurately aligned, but if you want that last bit of accuracy, it's a good idea to look at the reticle inside the polar housing and make sure it's exactly orthogonal or parallel or however you want to say it to this axis of rotation. When you thread in the mount or thread in the polar scope, it's very close, but it's not perfectly aligned. And that last couple of arc minutes or maybe arc seconds um, can make the difference between perfect polar alignment and pretty good polar alignment. This adjustment is not the easiest thing to do. It requires a, uh, a little bit of a trial and error during the day time and a little tiny uh, Allen wrench to adjust some set screws on the side. So don't, don't proceed unless you're absolutely sure you want to do this uh, last little bit of adjustment. Okay, as you can see, I've completely thrown the, uh, the equatorial mount out of whack. I've lowered the uh, RA housing until this thing is almost horizontal. You do not want to do this with a telescope or counterweights on it because, uh, first of all, they might interfere with the tripod legs, and at worst, it's going to be out of balance and it might be dangerous. Uh, so it's best to do this with nothing attached to it. The idea is you need to point the polar axis housing, the polar alignment scope, at something off in the distance, and it's easiest to do this during the day when you can see what you're doing. So I like to find the corner of a building or the top of a power pole or, or some landmark out there uh, where I can get the uh, center of the crosshair of the poroscope dead on that object out there. Um, distance doesn't really matter for this. There's no parallax because you're not looking through something on the side. You're looking right down the center of the axis. So just some object out there. Um, get it as low as you can. Um, if you don't have many tall things out there, you might have to lower one leg a little bit to get this a little, a little bit out of balance in order to point it low enough. Just be very careful that you don't get it so far out of balance that it might fall. Now, a little background first. What are we actually doing here? What are we trying to accomplish? So the polar scope is on the back here. It's looking through the, the mount. And ideally, the center of the reticle, very center, which is supposed to be what points at the North Pole, not at Polaris, but at the North Pole. That should be directly in the center of this axis, of this pivot point. And so what will happen is if you rotate the RA axis through 360 degrees, what you should see is that center of the uh, reticle just rotating only, not pivoting, but just rotating right around itself and the center of the uh, point staying right on the, uh, the North Pole. Well, under the real world situation, when you attach this thing, the reticle is sitting inside this cell and it's not exactly centered. So what happens is when you rotate the RA axis, uh, that cross rotates, but it also pivots and scribes a circle as it goes. So it'll look something like this at worst, right? And that tells you that your uh, reticle is not exactly lined up with the uh, rotation axis of this mount. So that's what this alignment procedure is going to fix, getting it exactly centered. All right, so the first thing I like to do is uh, put your mount in this position with a counterweight shaft horizontal and uh, aligned up so you're looking at some object out there. So adjust your latitude scale or the latitude adjustment and the azimuth adjustment while looking through it here and get the corner of that building or whatever your signpost and your marker is, get it dead on aligned right on the center of the crosshair in this position with the counterweight shaft horizontal. Okay, now everything is set. We've got uh, that object out there right in the center of the crosshair. My RA axis is horizontal, and now I'm ready to test and see how well aligned my reticle is. So what you want to do is take your RA axis, unlock it here, and rotate it 180 degrees around to the other side and lock it back down. Now look back through the reticle and see where your target is. So now when you look back through the reticle, 180 degrees opposite rotation of the RA axis, uh, if it's not exactly lined up, the reticle will now be some distance away from your target. That's the full error, the, the, the range of error of your uh, reticle, and that's what needs to be adjusted out. So how do you adjust it? Um, you're going to have to, in your mind's eye, gonna figure out where it was before. That was the target, and then where the reticle is now, which is probably, like, when I'm looking through here, it's off in the sky above and to the left of the target. So draw an imaginary line between where it is now and where your target is, and you've got to adjust the reticle until it's halfway back uh, between the endpoint where it is now and where your target originally was. In order to do the actual adjustment, there are three set screws on the polar housing. 
and they adjust the cell. So the, just imagine the, uh, the reticle is sitting inside this housing, it's inside a little metal ring cell, and that ring has a little dovetail channel cut around it. And at 120 degrees around that cell are these three set screws, and they're holding it in place, just clamping it there. If you were to loosen one slightly, and tighten another one down, it will move, it'll shift the reticle up, down, left, and right in some like triangular pattern around the image. So it's a little bit of a trial and error thing. You're gonna have to loosen one, tighten another one, and see if you've moved the crosshair back towards the target or in some random other direction. So there's where a little bit of trial and error comes in. You've gotta figure out how to get it back halfway to your original target. And it's very important to note uh, during this adjustment not to loosen those set screws too much. Um, I wouldn't go more than maybe an eighth of a turn or a, si or a quarter of a turn on each screw at a time. You loosen one and then you tighten another one. Don't loosen more than one at a time and don't loosen any one more than about a quarter turn. Because what will happen is those three set screws, if you loosen one too much, the entire reticle can drop out of the little channel it's in. And then you're going to have to take the entire polar scope off, unscrew the top, reset it. It's a big, it's a big pain. So just do a small adjustment and one full adjustment is, again, loosening one slightly tightening another one the same amount. That will lock the reticle back down into its new position. Okay, so let's say you've made a couple of adjustments. You think you're basically halfway back. Uh, more than likely, you're going to have to do this a couple of times, a couple of iterations, in order to just verify you've got it dead on. So uh, recenter the target using your latitude and azimuth adjustments, and then do the same thing. Unlock it here, rotate through another 180 degrees, lock it back down, then look again and see if it's described as a circle as it rotated, or if that uh, crosshair just rotated by itself, right on top of itself. Um, chances are you probably need to do it one more time, though the error will be less. So again, do the adjustment with the three set screws, um, get it back down to where you think it's about halfway, and then do it again, 180 degrees, and see where you're at. After probably two to maybe three iterations of that, that crosshair will stay right on the target that you've got out there, and now you know your polar axis is super aligned. All right, so that procedure is uh, in the manual of most of the mounts, uh, if not in the polar alignment um, uh, manual itself. So read through the procedure as well as kind of reference this, this video. And again, this is not for the faint of heart. You can ignore that adjustment and just use the polar alignment scope as it is without that last bit of adjustment. And it'll be fine. It'll get you uh, uh, aligned enough for general observing, for any go-to operation, for shorter exposures. That really is the last bit of adjustment to get the most precise uh, polar alignment for the longest exposure uh, deep sky images. Um, if you're not perfectly aligned and you're doing a really long exposure, at some point you'll start to see some field rotation in the image. So this will get rid of all that. Um, and is the next best thing before you need to do a deck drift, which is the ultimate in accurate alignment, but takes the longest amount of time. Um, I mentioned deck drift, declination drift in the other video, um, but just really quickly, if you want to learn more about that, just do an internet search for declination drift telescope or equatorial mount, and you'll find all sorts of procedures on how to do uh, that uh, very uh, accurate alignment that takes the longest amount of time. All right, well, there you go. How to calibrate the polar alignment reticle in your polar axis finder. Thank you very much, clear skies.